dear students, a very warm welcome to all of you who are already here with us for today's live webinar, which is going to happen on the topic, Scope of Public Health Education Today. Now, today's topic is going to cover lots of important points, such as infection prevention to chronic disease prevention, mental health, bioterrorism, demography, environmental health, health financing, social determinants of health, and health policy. These are all crucial parts of today's topic and will be the scope of study in the Masters in Public Health program, which we will be talking about in detail today. We have a jam-packed session uh, packed in for you in today's webinar. And in a few short minutes, we will get started on a presentation on today's topic, which will be given by Dr. Joe Thomas, you can see him. He is the Associate Dean here with the Faculty of Sustainability Studies at MIT World Peace University. And once he is done with his presentation, we will also move on to our live question and answer section, wherein we will take your questions and our esteemed faculty members will be answering all your queries. This is also a great time, dear students, to inform you that we are currently accepting admissions applications to this preferred program, which is the Masters in Public Health program at MIT World Peace University. Dear students, you can log into admissions.mitwpu.edu.in and check out this program and you can send in your admissions applications to us so that we can get in touch with you with the next steps. And once again, dear students, I'm sure you're already buzzing with questions. So feel free to ask all your questions in our question and answer section that we have for you today. All you need to do is type out your questions in the Q&A section that we have for you. And one of our faculty members will be happy to answer all your queries. All right, so without any further delay, let's get started on today's webinar on the topic, Scope of Public Health Education Today. We are going to talk about the Masters in Public Health program at MIT World Peace University, for which we are currently accepting admissions applications. And after this webinar, you can log into admissions.mitwpu.edu.in and explore this program further and send in your admissions applications to us. Telling us so much more about this topic is going to be Dr. Joe Thomas, who is here with us today. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the MIT World Peace University's webinar, focusing on the uh, scope of the public health education today. Today we are discussing about um, the opportunities and the scope of masters in public health. As many of you know, public health is about the science of promoting and protecting the health and well-being of the population. And um, 
The School of Public Health is situated at the Faculty of Sustainability Studies at the MIT World Peace University. And this program is being offered from the beautiful campus of the MIT World Peace University, situated at the Powell Road in, uh, in Pune. And um, uh, many of you are aware of what are the opportunities. And uh, interestingly, when you start talking about uh, public health, what reminds me is that uh, what uh, Professor Parishraman said once, he is a director of uh, attention to social science. He said, public health addresses the complexity of the health of the, com of the community or the society, rather than focusing on the health of an individual at the individual level. And it ensures everyone is aware of the health and through education, through campaign, and through influencing government policies. This gives uh, in nutshell some idea about um, what is public health is about. And if you look at, we unpack a little more about public health. It's about um, uh, health surveillance. It's about monitoring of the health program. It's about the health pro uh, promotion. It's about the disease prevention. It's about the recovery. And uh, particularly today's context, um, uh, we are going through the, uh, an epidemic. And it's about prevention, care, and support possibilities. And what are the policies should be in place? And to contextualize the need for this course, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said the country is focusing on four main pillars of health. To focus on the universal health, these are preventive health, affordable health care, supply side intervention, and mission mode intervention. Out of these four pillars of Indian healthcare program or health system, the public health, you know, the preventive health is one of the major forte of the, the, the public health. And the School of Public Health, we hope to contribute towards a, a, a trained manpower to deal with those aspects of those functions of public health. The head of the WHO World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros, he said, together for a healthier world. For him, the importance is a collective uh, effort, being together to meet with a, a public health challenge or creating a healthier world. And also, some of you know that uh, the international community has created and agreed on, on um, 17 sustainable development goals, which are called as um, sustainable development goals to be achieved by 2030. And uh, health is one of the major prominent component in the sustainable development goal. To achieve sustainability and the sustainable development goal in its totality, health has to be central to that. And sustainable development three is about um, ensuring health and well-being. To give an importance to the, give the idea of how important is health and well-being, to the overall well-being of the society and overall uh, development of the country. And the School of Public Health, we are motivated by a strong vision. Our mission, our vision is to we aspire to becoming a leading public health institution in the country. That's the vision we are being inspired by. And um, our mission is to advance the knowledge in public health, innovate for health for all, respond to the challenges of commitment of sustainable development and health, and addressing the social determinants of health. These are the main mission of our, our faculty, our School of Public Health. And uh, the Master's in Public Health program, it's uh, uh, specifically made for this program. And uh, this program has some um, emphasis on foundation course, core courses, specialization course, field work, and skill development courses. So this is a way the, the program overview, the program is presented. The foundation course is, is uh, related to the policy, program formulation, organization and management, nutritional environment and public health challenges at the local level, national level, international level, and most importantly, the social determinants of health. The core course of MBH program, which we are offering are epidemiology, biostatistics, health economics, the demographic transition and its impact on health, health protection, health promotion, and uh, health research. So these are the core courses of the MBH program, which we are offering. And also this MBH program is offering a specialized course, it's nutrition. The MBH students, they have a specialization in nutrition and food security. And uh, field work and project is mandatory for the MBH students. And this, the field work and projects of developing skills for applying their knowledge at the real situation at the community level. And uh, this will lead towards uh, developing their skills in ana anal analytics, development planning, experience of working with industry and organization. And also 
learning innovative ways to develop and practice in the transdisciplinary research. And I would, I, I would like to emphasize that the, one of the key aspects of MBH program is it's a transdisciplinary program. And um, when, when you look at, let me emphasize what are the salient features of program. <coughs> this is, again, I mentioned as earlier, this is a transdisciplinary approach. And we bring in perspective from science and humanities and social science, theoretical as well as applied and skill oriented courses. And we experience through working on in-house research project. Uh, focus on research is an important aspect of uh, this MBA program. And also the faculty which we are bringing are uh, diverse experience and work experience, particularly focusing on health and development sector for several years. And also we are engaging and we are developing partnership with the governments, corporate organizations, and civil society. And also we hope to create professionals to ensure sustainable public health. So in nutshell, this is the, the specific features of our MBH program. And let me take it through the, the syllabus part of the MBH program. And um, the, the master's programs, all the master's program in at MIT World Peace Universities are tri-semester programs. That means in a year, we have three, uh, semester, three tri-semesters. And uh, in two years, we have six semesters. So that's the way the program is uh, being worked out. And the semester one is uh, the foundation course that deals with principles and practice of public health, introduction to sustainable development and health, introducing health policy making in developing countries, introduction to social determinants of health, mini projects, and a special essay on nutrition and public health challenges in India. That's one of the research uh, projects they have to do. And uh, as part of the MIT's unique program, there's a course on, uh, on peace, on different aspects of peace and peace building nationally, internationally. And the semester two is about um, health management principles and practices, the basic epidemiology and basic biostat, demographic transition and its impact imp implication on health, introduction to population science and public health, introduction to health economics, health promotion, introduction to financial management and uh, budgeting in health. So these are the content of the, the tri-semester two. And the tri-semester three is about um, evaluating health program, theory and methods, principles of social research, methods, both qualitative and quantitative, and the environmental crisis and health, that's a special course on um, tri-semester three. Then we have a field work for four weeks related to public health challenges in India that uh, the students we work with each student to select, to help them to select their research and the fieldwork topic and focusing on um, uh, the, the, the public health challenges in India. And we also have a special course on uh, law and ethics in public health. And the tri semester three also we have a peace course, the advanced peace course. And the second year, the tri semester four is about health and human security, the global health and health diplomacy. The health security in today's context is going to be very interesting because we know that the traditionally the defense system is, is, is about the boundaries, but public health is about the security of the human being, security of the person. So this has got very meaning, it's a very meaningful in today's the coronavirus pandemic context. And also the tri-semester four is dealing with advances in operational research. And uh, the tri-semester five is about advanced health informatics information technology, what is its implication on public health, and also artificial intelligence is also part of that, how that is impacting and affecting on health. And uh, you may know that there's a huge explosion of uh, health-related applications and health-related um, information technology application. So this course is looking at uh, those developments and uh, its regulatory issues and how that could promote health and well-being in the broader sense. And also there is a special focus on intervention to reduce risk factors on non-communicable disease and communicable diseases. And you know that uh, there's a shift in the health issues case from the communicable disease to non-communicable disease, particularly on cardiovascular disease, diabetics, and, um, and also the, uh, the issues of cancer. These this issues could be preventable through public health intervention. So this, our program will be focusing specifically on reducing the burden of non-communicable disease. And the last tri-semester is about uh, information, education, communication for health promotion, and also introduction to global health and global health institutions. You know that there are several key institutions at the global level is contributing towards health and well-being. 
institutions like WHO institutions like um, the Na Na Institution of National Prominence, like it is in the United States, ICMR in India, Pasteur Institute in, uh, in, um, uh, in, in uh, France. So we'll be introducing about the function of those uh, prominent institutions and also UN institutions like UNICEF, UNFPM, uh, WHO, how they're contributing towards uh, international health and well being, and also what are the modalities of this. And particularly, health is increasingly being played, playing an important role in the international relationship, which I mentioned earlier the, the idea of health diplomacy. And interestingly, on May 11th, our school is hosting a, a, a webinar focusing on health diplomacy in the context of um, COVID 19. And I'm inviting all of you using this opportunity to attend those, that, um, uh, that webinar on 11th. Indian Foreign Secretary is going to speak about the health diplomacy, particularly multilateralism in the context of um, COVID pandemic. This is just to give an idea about what some of the opportunities our school is offering to the students, the prospective students, as well as um, uh, the community in general. And also, I just wanted to tell you something about um, uh, the international immersion. This, we, are, we are particularly creating an international study tour uh, looking at a major master's in public health program, the universities internationally, particularly UK University, offering MBH program. We are, we are trying to develop a, um, a, a visit to those universities. And also we are trying to work out one shared, one or two shared classes with them. So the details we will be informing uh, shortly once things are uh, um, uh, being expanded and, uh, and developed. We are still in the, the early stages of the discussion, but one thing is sure, we've committed to create an international study tour for our, all our MBA students. And also, along with our master's uh, MBA program, we are also uh, contributing to our skill development as part of the additional courses. And they are advanced in environment and occupational health. This may be in the form of a certificate course, in addition to the main program we're offering, these are elective courses you can select or you can get a, an additional certificate course for this program. Global health security and international policy, public health nutrition, epidemiology, health program policy planning, health management, reproductive maternal, neonatal and child health and, and adolescents, advanced health economics and financing, advanced health informatics, advanced health promotion, and international immersion. These are the special courses which we'll be offering an additional uh, certificate course in addition to the MBH program. And also some of you are interested to know what are the career opportunities. I'm quite sure that all of you would keen to know and discuss about what are the career opportunities. The career opportunities are uh, the government organization, corporations, international organization, NGOs, UN agencies, academic institutions. And interestingly, the, the Public Health Foundation of India, they did a study on what are the, the career opportunities of masters in health. And they did a detailed analysis of that. They identified the public health professionals are trained to do 10 functions. One is monitoring the health status of the community, diagnose and investigate the health problems in the community, inform, educate and empower the people, develop policies and plan to implement community health, enforcing the laws and regulations related to the health, linking people to need the, in the health services, ensuring the competent health, uh, public health person in the care workforce, evaluating the effective effectiveness of the health program, research into the public health program. And if you look at some of the, the job they do, disease prevention and control officials, uh, health promotion officers, health educators, health counselors, mass media, mass medical educators, mass media specialists in looking at health, occupational health, environmental health, environmental scientists, reproductive health specialists, public health and the sexual and reproductive health counselors, oral health, oral health physician, oral health dental hygienist with uh, public health training, uh, tobacco control and tobacco prevention officials, population health science, and the public health laboratory uh, managers, public health community health nurses who, are, who get additional training in MPH, and public health nutritional experts, food, food inspectors, drug inspectors, and uh, pharmaceuticals, pharmacovigilance uh, specialists, drug research specialists, and spe specialists in global health, and some people, they work with uh, uh, hospitals and public health specialists, and also they may work with research institutions, and some of them, they may work with um, the insurance industry to advise them on a health profile and health-related 
this is the so this is just to give some of them uh, example of what kind of jobs the mba students finally they end up doing and um, and also i just want to briefly introduce we are some of the international reputed faculty and uh, professor joske banders uh, she is a head of the the unit of athene at the university of amsterdam she is one of our chair professor professor chandrajan pandav is the former professor at the all india institute of medical science dr unikrishnan is a um, leading child specialist in the disaster management area working with um, um, uh, the war child in um, based in amsterdam and um, um, and also professor uh, parishram will be taking at issues of health policies and um, and just to give an idea about some of our uh, well established well distinguished uh, faculty and uh, the faculty of sustainability studies is the uh, entire faculty is our disposable disposable and they will be happy to assist you with your research and i just wanted to introduce a uh, professor ashok a group captain uh, deepak apte is our uh, pro vice chancellor professor uh, aparna watwe prasad kulkarni pankaj kopraade and nilam pandit uh, nubul kulkarni and kiran johnson these are our faculty which is supporting us with our um, uh, the teaching as well as field immersion and also our uh, special training for the our research supervision and also i would briefly i would like to say something about our life in the campus this is not just study and uh, study alone we also have a, a good a very lively active campus life including we have an access to um, uh, the gym access to different uh, societies and the different uh, entertainment program and also they can be part of the uh, different um, uh, training programs like a chess competition they have robotics training technology training sports summit just to give a brief idea about um, uh, life in the campus and also i just wanted to briefly mention about what are the eligibility and the selection process remember what's the most important eligibility is that any graduate student can apply earlier once upon a time public health mbh programs are are exclusive domain of uh, medical graduates not anymore the non medical graduates are particularly encouraged and welcome to join this mbh program in fact the, this mbh program is we are just created specifically towards focusing on the skill development needs of the students with non medical background and any candidate having a bachelor's degree in any discipline with a minimum of 3 years duration or equivalent and a 40% marks is aggregate mark is a minimum requirement and the, and the selection is based on the online application statement of purpose regarding the your interest in joining the course and uh, and also there is a uh, a peak uh, postgraduate level entrance test for the entire university level that's in and basic entrance test which um, i mean it should not be a, a big hassle for any of you but also we have a provision for some of the students who may require an, an urgent uh, provisional admission because they like apply for a, a scholarship external scholarship program or some of them they have to apply for the bank loan so we have a provision to offer you subject to the other requirement we could give you a provisional admission for students who require them and the students can get in with the get in touch with the faculty or me directly and uh, we can discuss about your specific needs about uh, or specific requirement for um, a, a, a spot admission or a, a provisional admission which we'll be happy to discuss about it please feel free to uh, drop a line or give us a call and the the, the fee is for uh, the, the two year program is uh, 3 lakhs and the step 1 is a payment of the application fee so 1500 rupees step 2 is the first installment of the fee that is 75000 at the time of the admission that probably in august september this intake because we are still waiting for the formal uh, admission formal classes may begin in september so we hope to finish our admission process by august thus i would request you to please be uh, stay tuned we will inform you about the exact date of the the classes when it will begin and it will be announced on our web page we will also individually contact you to inform you about the, the opening date dates and also i am glad to inform you that we have a very uh, generous scholarship policy and um, uh, this scholarship is a, a complete a fee wa waiver that's the for the core, core issue about our scholarship there's a provision for the students to get the full um, the fee waiver and provided their uh, overall grade is more than 60% and this is uh, classified in the six categories and uh, second category is if you get a 60 
uh, plus or my, uh, minus, so 60% minus, you get you have to pay only 82%. You will get an exception of 82,000 uh, rupees. So I would invite you to take a look at our web page and the details of scholarship policies are given, or feel, please feel free to discuss with us. And also I just want to take a few seconds of your, uh, your attention to explain about our Faculty of Sustainability Studies. Under the Faculty of Sustainability Studies, we have five schools, School of Sustainable Development, School of Disaster Management, School of Public Health, School of Agribusiness Management, School of Ecology and Environmental Management. And also we offer a PhD program. This is just to give you an overview about the kind of the spectrum of education we are offering, that is BA from undergraduate level, BA social science to PhD program. So this is a spectrum of PhD. This gives a, a, an intellectual depth for our studies and teaching and learning at this faculty. So MBA students will be, obviously you have access to the training and expertise of the, the teachers from other, other schools of this faculty as well. And, um, and also some of the innovative approach to our learning again, and let me mention, we have a rural immersion based learning and it's a mandatory program. All the students, they have to spend um, uh, two credit hours equivalent to um, the rural immersion program. They have to stay in a village and they have to do certain structured self-learning process. There's a national study too, there's an international study too. And also we have a special module on peace studies. The, our university stands for World Peace University. We have a special emphasis on uh, teaching peace to the students, all the students in the university across the spectrum of uh, the, uh, their schools and the, the, the domain of knowledge, the peace studies and mandatory. And I hope this will be a, a unique learning experience for the students. And um, also let me again emphasize that the programs are being offered from the campus of MIT World Peace University at the, at the Powder Road. And uh, I hope some of you may drop in and uh, I look forward to meeting you, most of you, in our classroom or uh, for a discussion for your, your details of your course and course requirements. And uh, I thank you for being with us and, uh, and hope to see you soon. Have a good day. Bye-bye. All right, great. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Joe, for taking us through that presentation. Uh, such uh, valuable information, dear students, that was shared with you regarding this program, uh, which is the Masters in uh, Public Health program offered by MIT World Peace University. Dear students, you heard about our generous scholarship policy you also heard about the eligibility criteria, the admissions process, what exactly this program entails, the kind of career prospects and the assistance that you will get with your placements and your internships. And of course, the amazing exposure as well that you will get while you're in this two year program, uh, which includes the Rural Immersion Program, the National and also the International Immersion Programs. Apart from that, we also heard about the skill development courses, which are also a part of this program. So I am sure you are buzzing with a lot of questions. Right now is your time to type out all your questions to your students. As you know, there are no wrong questions. We are happy to take any question that you have regarding today's topic and you can type it out in the Q&A section and we will get to it very shortly. All right, another reminder to let everybody know that we are in fact currently accepting all admissions applications to this program here at MIT World Peace University. That's right, dear students. All you need to do is log into admissions.mitwpu.edu.in and select the program of your choice. In this case, this is the Masters in Public Health program. And then send in your admissions applications to us. It is very much available online. That is the first step of your application process, in fact. You just need to fill in all the details in the application, make the payment of 1500 rupees, and then we get in, get your application and it allows us to get in touch with you further and let you know of the next steps. 
I'm sure a lot of you are buzzing with questions. So we are going to jump on to our Q&A audio segment. And you can see that we are also showing you the answers to questions on our screen. These are the most frequently asked questions uh, that we received from students and we have answered them for you. So you can also give that a quick read. All right. May I request uh, our faculty members, uh, we will be joined by Dr. Joe Thomas and Aparna ma'am will join us on the audio and we also have Neeta ma'am uh, speaking to us. Okay, our first question is from Nitin Jadav and he's asking us how to get a job in an international NGO after the completion of this program. Is there a di direct recruitment through interview or do we have to give any specific exam? Thank you, Nitin. Thank you for asking that question. This is a question uh, quite often asked by um, many students. Practically, I would say that um, most of the students ask this question, what is the opportunity for working with uh, an international agency? And uh, MBH program is uh, an entry point for um, working in the international health that's normally called as the global health. The global health programs are being managed by different agencies to begin with. There are very international agencies specifically focusing on the global health, for example, the Gates Foundation. And also there is a range of United Nations agencies specializing on health and the global health. If you look at the World Health Organization as an institution exclusively mandated by, to promote um, the health and well-being of the the, the global community and in, uh, interestingly WH is playing an important role in um, coordinating the, the pandemic the, the COVID pandemic globally so um, the entrance is there are different ways one is an entrance you can enter this associate with the agencies as an inter internship base for example WH has got a very interesting paid internship program for the MBA students at the final year so but then you have to appear for an entrance test at the, at the WHO's um, internship program. WHO internship program is based in Geneva, whereas UNFP also got an internship program for the MPH final year students. The UNFP MPH, uh, the internship is done on two levels. One is at the national level and also at the international level. International level, the UNFP uh, internship is given at the New York office and the national level at the Delhi office. Both are based on a, an entrance uh, test. And uh, if you work with uh, MSO of uh, Save the Children, uh, there are many international NGOs. They also look at the possibility of, of taking students on internship basis. Normally, that's the first step to an entry at, at the doorstep kind of a thing. And also, if you work with the national NGOs in the public health sector and also global health area, so that also gives some yeah, some opening towards the um, international public health uh, opening. And what we can offer is that uh, we offer we can offer counseling for the students how to get into global health arena if that's your area of interest and also we'll, we'll mentor you, we'll guide you and also we may give a good guidance and a reference towards those, those opportunities. And uh, I hope Nitin you are um, satisfied with my answer. If you have any further question, if you are, uh, please feel free to get in touch with me individually through email or through WhatsApp. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, all right, our next question is coming from Ria. And she's asking us, how many seats do you have in this program? Uh, Ria, we have 40 vacancies for the MBH program this time. So I'm quite sure that you will know, have a seat there. So please feel free to apply at your earliest convenience. Thank you. OK, great. All right, our next question is again from Nitin. And he is asking us, how do I prepare to become an EIS officer? Uh, what is the requirement to become an EIS officer? Uh, environmental impact assessment officers are specialized program and we have a separate um, school on environmental and ecology. We have a specialist trained faculty for uh, to train that. And I would suggest uh, Professor Aparna to give you answer to this because the environmental impact assessment is a very specialized program and uh, Abarna, may I request you to give a, an answer to this uh, question please. Yes, thank you uh, Dr. Joe. 
so environment impact assessment is a whole uh, procedure that uh, you will need to learn the you need to have understanding one of the notification itself and then uh, there are various sectors under which environmental impacts are done um, there are professionals who train uh, in either one sector say oil and natural gas impact assessment or infrastructure assessment or uh, health and security like public health uh, in the corporate sector so all these are different specializations as such so you learn also while uh, working with certain consultancies and then take up your own programs uh, or own projects as such or you can attach as a freelance consultant with various organizations uh you have a procedure uh, there is um, an accreditation procedure which is started by the ministry of environment and health uh, uh, ministry of environment forest and climate change and that is for accreditation nabet accreditation is called and uh, you can become a functional area expert in uh, whatever section you choose to work in i hope that answers your question okay great all right our next question comes from shivam and shivam is asking us uh, what are the fees for this program and is there any uh, installment facility available to students the the total fees for the two year program is um, uh, it's a 3 lakhs and of course there is a provision for um, installment the first installment is 75000 rupees at the at the time of that mission but also if um, some student they have a uh, some uh, specific um, personal situation and they are free to contact the faculty to discuss about uh, the possibilities of how to structure their um, uh, installment or the the fees thank you okay great um so uh, at this point if i can request uh uh so uh, prasad sir if you can take us uh, to the presentation in fact we have a query from a student who is asking us to talk to them about the scholarship policy that is available here at MIT World Peace University for this program so uh, i would request sir prasad sir if you could show us the ppt for uh, this and joseph in the meantime you can take this question for us uh, so dr joe i'd request you to just let us know about the scholarship policy that we have in place for this program uh, we have a generous uh, scholarship program and the scholarship program is offered uh, in terms of the exemption from the fee pay, uh, to be paid for the university as you know that the total fees are 3 lakhs and uh, there's a provision for getting the 100% exemption for the fee for the top uh, candidates and uh, this fee for the scholarship program is divided into six categories so according to different categories there are different levels of exemption so so that way this is based on the graduation level your grades and the plus 2 and that's the way it is constructed the scholarship program and i would request you to take a look at our scholarship policy at the our web page or please feel free to discuss with the faculty while they are applying for the position whether they are eligible for the scholarship and um, what we notice is that uh, probably four to five students will get a, a different kind of scholarship from um, mit world peace university that's the overall assessment we have and uh, also there are provisions and possibilities of looking for scholarship beyond the um, the scholarship offered by the mit world peace university so these are done by case by case and we promote them and also some of the students you know they may be able to work in the some of the research project as and when it is ready so there are different ways to subsidize your um, education needs and the fee to be paid to the university i hope this may be satisfying your query about uh, scholarship um, scholarship policy thank you okay great all right our next question is coming from a student who is asking us why is the masters in public health program unique compared to the other social science programs um thank you for asking that question 
what you have to remember is that the social science programs are normally a broad based issues and different uh, specialization see for example we have a um, masters in uh, sustainability studies we have masters in sustainable rural development so the masters in public health is specifically focusing on the health issues as the name it suggests masters in public health we are focusing on uh, public health as a core focus of the study and your training your theoretical understanding your conceptual analytical capability all related with the uh, health and the well-being of the society so that's why this is called a um, masters in public health i hope it may explain your your question okay great um all right now we want to move on to our next question from shruti and shruti is asking us um can you uh, talk about the specific job designations and roles that a student can expect after graduating from this program um as i mentioned in my introduction i mentioned that there is a detailed study was done by public health foundation of india to look at what are the career prospect of mba students so we had a detailed analysis of what are the job opportunities for mba students so most interestingly many of the mba students um, they require certain level of guidance from the faculty those who receive the guidance from the faculty they they get a better performance and if you look at the title the job title if you look at it you have to look at um, uh, so the title could be disease prevention control official health promotion officer health educator health counselor uh, mass educate mass media or uh, specialist in public health occupational and environmental health specialist reproductive health specialist particularly hiv and aids prevention support officer and the public health hygienist oral health specialist oral health promotion um, specialist dental health uh, promotion specialist uh, health researchers researchers tobacco prevention control officers population health scientists public health laboratory managers public health and community health nurses if you are trained in a, uh, your basic training is in a, uh, nursing uh, entomology and the vector biologists public health nutrition specialist food inspectors drug inspectors job in the food safety industry pharmaceuticals pharmaco vigilance specialist and health insurance and health finance specialist health economist health insurance advisor and the person working in the uh, hospitals as a public health specialist and some of them may end up as a hospital managers these are the some of the sample of the job titles the mba students finally uh, end up taking up so just to give an idea about you know, what are the job opportunities they take up and um, one currently the mba students are doing this some of these jobs i hope uh, i'm answering your question thank you all right dear students you heard the kind of prolific career prospects that are available with a degree like this um and i think it is here for us to very clearly see how crucial such a program is especially in this world we can see what a health crisis looks like on the global scale and all the more reason to pursue a program like this and make your difference really in this program uh you know you may be interested or passionate about things like infection prevention to chronic disease prevention maybe you're passionate about mental health bioterrorism uh environmental health health financing social determinants of health and health policy all of these crucial factors especially at the policy level are so important and this is a program that really educates you on these topics and so much more and certainly allows you to foray into uh, you know whether it's the health sector or ngos or international bodies such as the un sky really is the limit when it comes to the kind of very interesting and innovative careers that you can go with this program so i really urge you to explore this program in detail and see the kind of value addition that it can bring to your life all right um ma'am aparna ma'am we've heard back from nitin again and he's asked telling us uh ma'am it is a epidemiology intelligence service officer 
which is con uh, which is conducted by CDC of the US and NCDC of India. Uh, Suchi Rupa, this question will be better answered by Dr. Joe. Uh, I'm sorry, Suchi, can you rep uh, repeat that question, please? Sure thing, sir. Uh, I hope you remember Nitin's earlier question. He had spoken about an EIS officer. So he has gone and uh, shared the full form. He was talking about uh, the epi epidemiology intelligence service officer. Uh, and I believe this is conducted by the CDC of the US and NCDC of India. And he wanted to know uh, basically regarding that. Um, see, what, what happens is that MBA students give him, a, this is an entry pro, um, uh, possibility for that, that kind of programs. Uh, Dr. Thomas, uh, let me, uh, this is Neeta, let, let me just take that up. Uh, the EIS officer is, I believe it stands for Epidemic Intelligence Officer. Since Nitin's talking about the CDC uh, in the United States and the NCDC of India, uh, the EIS officers are, as far as I know, you'll have to go, Nitin, to the website of NCDC for, you know, the eligibility and, and all that that you're asking. Uh, but yes, I do believe that you need to be a master's. I believe you need to have work ex and somewhere in the... Um, uh, you can be in a private job or you could be in a state government job and the states, etc. nominate someone to go for this program. They have, a, I think it's a one year or two year certificate program that uh, the CDC from the US supports the NCDC of India. So, I mean, it, it's not specific to the webinar topic today. And honestly, um, we wouldn't be full time experts in answering a question for the NCDC. So I would really recommend you go to their website. I, I hope that helps. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not an expert on NCDC, but exactly. I just wanted to say a few words about um, the epidemic intelligence program. But actually, that is about uh, the contact tracing officer. And uh, some people, they may call them as epidemic intelligence officers, but actually, the epidemiologists and also some of them, they specialize in contact tracing. And if you look at the COVID, uh, the COVID pandemic, one of the ways to control is um, uh, the test and uh, trace the contact. So this is a um, the two specific um, aspect of the COVID pandemic prevention. And uh, after the testing, you trace the contact. The contact tracing officers are normally called as um, the epidemic uh, intelligence officer, but actually they're contact tracing officers. And many of them are with a specialization in public health. And, and some of them are specialists in epidemiology. And large number of them are social scientists, behavioral scientists, and uh, particularly anthropology trained anthropologists. They look at uh, social network analysis so this is not the, the core competency of the public health at, at we're discussing about, but this is a specialized training which you acquire over the, on, while we're doing the MBH program or after the MBH program. But generally we are giving an idea about um, the disease prevention intervention. From that point of view, there are specific intervention and this contact tracing is one of the very unique specialist uh, program like that. I hope I am answering some of your questions. Okay, great. All right, our next question comes from a student who's asking us, what is the kind of placement assistance that you will provide uh, students who pursue this program? See, one thing, you know, uh, getting all the students placement is a pride for the faculty. So definitely all the faculty, we will be, we will be providing support for the students for placement. That could be personal counseling, individual mentoring, and also guiding students to take up and also personal reference to different agencies. So this is at the faculty level. And also when we place them, place you for your internship program, sometimes that's an opportunity on entry to certain assignment in that agency. So there is various opportunity which your faculty will be working very closely with you to get your assignments uh, sorted out. And also MIT World Peace University, we have a centralized placement program and I'm quite sure that they also will be chipping and they also will be happy to help you with um, your placement um, needs and they will keep a track of um, placement opportunities. So you can rely on the faculty, you can rely on the centralized um, uh, the placement opportunity. And also we have our uh, advisor, we have a large network of visiting faculty and advisors and uh, we'll be um, utilizing their expertise and their um, 
network as well as as well for getting the placement for the students thank you okay great um neeta ma'am uh, can i also have you quickly let us know about the kind of placement support that mit world peace university offers to its students <laughs> Neeta ma'am are you still here with us Okay i believe ma'am is maybe facing some tech glitches so we'll go on to our next question um our next student is asking us what are the step by step admissions process for this program uh the first step is uh, applying for the Uh, at the our centralized admission sen uh, portal so once you admit and you pay 1500 rupees that admission will give you access to the faculties uh, the recruitment process and uh, next step is you go through the ud uh, pg pet then there is a, the candidate will be um, in, called for an interview that's um, at, at the current condition this will be on a or a telephone interview and also we may request you to write your um, your mission statement and your your uh, statement of purpose why you interested in uh, doing this course so the final uh, the merit list is prepared based on your 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 marks you received your aggregate marks your statement of purpose and your your interview personal interview and your test score for the entrance test so these are the broadly your um, selection criteria selection eligibility and the, and the selection process Hope I, I, I'm explaining you your question. Thank you. Okay, great. So, dear students, you heard uh, what the admission process for this program is going to look like. Step one, of course, is uh, going to our website, getting onto admissions.mitwpu.edu.in, and select this program if it is a program you'd like to pursue. and this is the masters in public health program and once you select this program you will see the application admissions application which is very much there online uh please fill that up if there are things within that application form that you don't have that you cannot fill out yet such as maybe uh your graduation marks or any other details really uh please know that you can still submit that application you can always come back to it and fill the rest of the details okay so you do have that flexibility and once you fill that application form make your payment of about 1500 rupees and that is your first step to the admissions process and once you're done with that you will get further information there will be you will have to submit a statement of purpose and once you submit that you will also have to uh, appear for the entrance exam which is the pg pet entrance exam tentatively at this point it looks like this will happen in the second half of june okay so somewhere after mid june is when we are expecting this uh, you know a uh, program uh, this entrance uh, test to happen and once you pep appear for this entrance test i'd also like to let you know that uh, don't uh, worry too much about the entrance exam it really is a basic aptitude test okay it will be a multiple choice uh, question pattern and it will have a things like you know uh, maybe like a numerical ability that they will check a general knowledge uh, section and maybe something in english so these are some of the things that you can expect on that test and uh, that's it apart from the entrance exam if there is a personal interview it will also happen online so there is no requirement for you to be physically there on campus if the situation does not get better just to let you know that your safety is absolutely a priority for us here at MIT world peace university and we do want to ensure that we are putting up the systems in place so that every student can seamlessly appear through the admissions process 
All right, dear students, on that note, I'd also like to make you aware of some of the important numbers that we have for you. One such number is our WhatsApp number, which is 981-492-848. I repeat that. The WhatsApp number is 981-492-848. So this is a number where you can connect with us after this webinar is over. And if you still have questions or queries about this program, please feel free to write to us on this number and we'll be happy to answer all your queries. Thank you once again to all the faculty members and our students for joining us today. I wish you a safe stay and a good stay and please stay home and stay indoors. Thank you so much.